Forging ahead, chapped lips and all, it's the Medicare for the Lazy Man podcast. A Medicare podcast that brings a tear to the eye. He gets the wintertime blues every winter. It's Medicare expert Doug Jones. Well, look who's here. It's the Medicare for the Lazy Man podcast, and we are coming to you on a um, what should be a bright, sunny, and warm Arizona morning here in Cave Creek, Arizona. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm hoping that you'll stick around for the whole podcast. I eventually will stumble over something that's of interest to everybody that has an interest in Medicare. And that's, I flail around hoping to discover a uh, podcast content uh, and a item of uh, interest to anybody who's got Medicare on the mind. Uh, the way I typically convey Medicare knowledge is through my book, Medicare for the Lazy Man 2023. You can go to barnesandnoble.com or amazon.com to get a very attractively priced copy of that book and you can get a beautiful magnificent hardcover for an extravagant $22 you can get a paperback for about $8 you can get a Kindle version an ebook for less than $4 or you can get the audible edition i think that's around $6 or something like that any of those four choices can be yours at amazon.com and uh, we would appreciate it If when you've finished reading it, if you found it helpful, that you go back and uh, leave a little short, very short written customer review telling future readers whether or not it was a good purchase for you. Anyway, having read that book, you'll know more about Medicare than almost anybody else in your social circle. And I'm thinking that your social circle might include everybody in the state you live in, because frankly, there aren't many Medicare experts in the United States. When you've read my book, Medicare for the Lazy Man 2023, you're going to find yourself chock full of Medicare knowledge. And you'll be up there with the best of the best in terms of people who give advice. However, you won't have an insurance license. I, on the other hand, have an insurance license in every state in the union, and I am ready to help you acquire the Medicare supplement and the drug plan that you're going to find necessary to complete your Medicare protection. So when you finish the book, send me an email and we'll get to work on uh, completing your Medicare protection plan. How is that, Randy? Did that sound more believable than uh, (laughs) many of my other introductions? Well, I won't say it than any of your other <laughs> introductions, but it sounded very good. Well, I, I'm uh, pleased to hear that. I, I, I'm always anxious to hear what you have to say because, you know, the folks on the uh, podcast here may not realize that Doug does all of this extemporaneously. Uh, and I think he does a damn good job of it. Uh, he's a, a very, very good extemporaneous speaker. But you know what I got going for you today, Doug? What's that, Randy? Stump the insurance expert. Ooh, ouch. Ooh, I just I just recovered from the last stumping. <laughs> so <laughs> all right, let's go again. Let's see what all happens. All right. Well, this so buckle up because here it comes. What happened on today's date in 1894? All right. So this is February 14th. In 1894, I'm thinking it might be that Winchester bought out Model 1894, their uh, most recent lever action uh, 30 caliber rifle. Is that possible? It's possible, but that's not what I need. Oh, rats, rats. 1894. Um, boy, oh boy, oh boy. 1894. Uh, was it uh, Thomas Edison? No. Was it Henry Ford? And uh, his first workable automobile. No. Nope. Uh, we could go on like this all day. And frankly, we're burning up <laughs> valuable time. So why don't you okay. share with us what, what you found out? Jack Benny was born on this day in 1894. Uh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. 
and uh, you should know where this city is that he was reared in. Yes, uh, Waukegan, 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 Illinois. Waukegan, yeah, Waukegan. Yep. His father operated a saloon and later a dry goods store. And what was his original? This is the this is actually the bonus point. Uh -huh. What was his original name? Oh, I don't know. He was Jewish, and all those guys changed their names. Uh, thinking that they had to be more anglicized in order to become uh, popular stars. So I don't remember what his original name was. Benjamin Kabelski. Oh, yeah. See, I'm never going to get something like that. I'm sorry. I'm just not in the Eastern European Jewish um, uh, circle. So I don't know what the names of a lot of these people are, but every single one of them has anglicized their name yeah. because they think that nobody – is going to uh, listen to them or pay them any heed. Uh, they'll be failures as performers. And I don't think that would have been true. I think Benjamin no. Kabelski would have uh, succeeded equally well. Well, I think so. I think so. So obviously I can't give you any points. No, you can't again. today. No, I can't give you any points. But <coughs> I will say that you gave it the old college try. So thank you, Doug. I appreciate the old college try. But let's go ahead and move on into some Medicare stuff because I'm looking at the podcast notes, and they're looking pretty darn interesting. Well, we have a bunch of stuff here. Some are more interesting than others. But one thing I made a note of, and Randy noticed this right away, and he, he thought I misspelled, uh, I made a note. People uh, using photos instead of scammers, but in reality, I wrote scanners. I just wrote it quickly. But here's a little thing I've noticed, like a, a modern uh, technological advancement that has worked against me. What happens is you've got insurance people, people that want to buy insurance, and you've got people like me who sell insurance. And what I have to do is accept an application from a person who wants to buy insurance. And then I have to send it off to the company where an underwriter will read that application and evaluate the risk associated with that person's application. Now, things have changed over the years, and we don't uh, have the same sort of questions. In other words, when somebody's applying for Medicare coverage, Medicare supplement, or a drug plan uh, in a timely manner, they don't have to answer any health questions or anything else. So the underwriting work that has to be done is fairly minimal. However, underwriters have always historically been a suspicious lot. And when they see paperwork that doesn't look like it was treated properly, they feel personally insulted and they feel as though somebody's trying to pull wool over their eyes. So I've got at least one company that when I have sent in a photograph of an application page uh, to the underwriters, I've had it thrown back in my face. Uh, with a, you know, like a rueful <laughs> or an angry response. And so I've tried to tell my clients, look, you got to find a scanner to scan me documents instead of, uh, instead of taking a photograph of the page and sending me the photograph. Now, lately, I've been a little more sophisticated with the, uh, the way I edit a photograph of a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And also I believe the underwriters might have had so many instances of people like my clients sending them photographs of documents. Maybe they've loosened up a little bit, but one interesting phenomenon that nobody has figured out yet is when somebody sends me something and they've placed it on a counter, it's typically their kitchen counter and in classy homes. Cause my, uh, my, um, uh, clients are all of the highest order of uh, financial success. So they've got uh, black or dark stone countertops, uh, granite countertops in their houses. And they'll typically put a uh, thing down there that I need a copy of and take a photograph of it and then send me that photograph. And then I put it in my printer. I send it to my printer and ask for it to print. Well, every one of these things, I need copies of their Medicare cards and copies of their current health insurance cards. And so they'll put an ID, they'll stand back about five feet, take a picture. So the card is in the middle, surrounded by all this dark color. When I send it to my printer, it takes about 10 minutes for the printer and it uses up almost one full black cartridges cartridge every time. And so 
Here's a little hint for you, people. If you're going to do this, if you're going to take a photograph of a document or a, an ID card and send it off to someplace that, and they're eventually going to print it, put it on a light or a white background. Even if you have a piece of paper that you can put it on and just take a picture of that so that there's no dark in the surrounding background, that's going to make it a little bit easier for those of us who are out here working, struggling, uh, slaving away to provide you with the Medicare protection that you're going to need for uh, increasing uh, medical bills as you grow older. So just a little hint, a light background is always better than a dark background for something that's going to be printed. So what else do we have here? We've got, uh, oh, a guy named Robert wrote me, and it reminded me of something that we should address every once in a while, and I didn't do it. So Robert wrote, hi, Doug, we corresponded about a year ago. And after reading your 19 or your 2022 lazy man, you are extremely helpful in providing quotes for uh, Medicare supplement and for drug plans. I thought I would retire in 2022, but I did not retire last year, but I have provided my notice this year and I purchased and read the 2023 Medicare for the lazy man book. Currently, one company is considering distributing my equity. Oh, currently, the company, his his employer, the company he works for, is considering distributing my equity over a 12-month period on a severance basis, (laughs) including health care. But I have read that unless my status is employee, I need to acquire Medicare supplement and uh, Medicare parts A and B sooner rather than later even if I have health care via severance. I have not seen the proposed severance package, but as I understand it, I would not be considered an employee under this package. So, and he said, I listen to your podcasts, which are very informative, but I do not recall one regarding this uh, this, um, particular subject matter. So to your knowledge, am I looking at my situation correctly? Also, I plan to become one of your many grateful clients and will be requesting uh, updated quotes in the event that I am correct regarding the above. And so I said, Robert, you are correct. What happens is if you retire and if your company pays you uh, or not pays you, but covers you, uh, puts you onto their retiree health plan, or if you take COBRA, Maybe your wife is not as old as you are. Maybe your husband is younger than you are. And so you take COBRA coverage and you're both on it for some period of time. The government does not consider that. Medicare does not consider that to be uh, coverage that is uh, uh, equivalent to the coverage that they consider to be creditable. And so, therefore, the clock will be ticking on a lifetime late enrollment penalty. You won't be considered to be covered for purposes of a prior uh, uh, an ongoing uh, medical condition. There could be a lapse in the coverage or period of time that you would not be covered for a prior health condition. So what you want to do is always make sure that if you're on the employer's health plan, you are considered to be actively at work. And if you leave under a a retirement scheme like Robert described to me here, then you won't be considered actively at work, even though the company is still providing health insurance for you. That will be called retiree health insurance, and the government does not consider that to be creditable. And you will find yourself looking at a possible lifetime late enrollment penalty. So hopefully that cleared up that little bit of confusion. I'm looking forward to Robert's uh, um, becoming my client. And um, let's see. I'm glad you will eventually become a valued client. I said, please be sure to let me know when you think the time is right for me to spring into action on your behalf. So I'll be waiting for Robert to tell me, okay, let's go. Give me updated quotes Give me uh, enrollment materials, and I shall become a client of yours. Now, I've got another little item here about uh, a guy named Rick Scott. Every time I hear the name, I think about a guy that I went to high school with who was a Rick Scott. I don't know where he wound up in life, but this is about a Rick Scott who is, I believe, a senator from Florida, a U.S. senator. 
He doubles down. This is uh, the headline of the, ad, uh, the article I'm reading. Scott doubles down on sunsetting all federal programs after Biden's jab. We're recording this not too long after the State of the Union address, and I would call the uh, State of the Onion address um, because there are many layers to peel away. But one of the things that uh, the president did was indicated that all Republicans want Medicare and Social Security to go away. And that's not true. And he was roundly booed by the Republican members of Congress and the Senate during the course of his speech. And then he started backpedaling uh, furiously, uh, indicating that, well, not all Republicans feel that way. Well, maybe not any Republicans feel that way. But and then he he later has used that. So the Democrats are going to use this as a uh, point of contention in their campaigns that are coming up for the next round of elections, which will take place in 2024. You're going to hear over and over and over again that Republicans want to end Medicare and end Social Security. And I'm going to tell you, it is not true. Now, if you talk to Doug Jones, yes, I would say the country was better off on sounder footing when we didn't extract money from one group of people to hand out to a different group of people. Don't let them tell you that the program lives on uh, the money that you, uh, the uh, the tax money that you get extracted from you is given back to you. That's not true. The tax money that's extracted from you for Medicare and for Social Security is handed out to people who are collecting those benefits. When you start collecting those benefits, it is the money that is uh, extracted from younger people that is given to you. This is just a giant uh, redistribution scheme that the federal government has come up with. And in the meantime, what have they done? Because they love to spend money, they have taken the cash that the programs used to have accumulated and spent it on stuff. And now we have IOUs in the lockbox. Uh, and lockbox is a a funny term dating back, to, I think, to Al Gore. He always talked about the lockbox. But the whole thing is, it would be wonderful if the United States did not have this, this anchor dragging on the economy of Medicare and Social Security. But that's just my personal opinion. What you're going to be hearing uh, from Democrats as we get closer to elections is that Republicans are trying to end, and they're promising to end, Medicare and Social Security, that couldn't be farther from the truth. Senator Rick Scott, Republican of Florida, on Wednesday defended his proposal to sunset all federal legislation after five years and slammed President Biden as confusing or confused in response to Biden's claim at the State of the Union address that some Republicans want to sunset Social Security and Medicare. In my plan, I suggested the following, all federal legislation sunsets in five years. If a law is worth keeping, Congress can pass it again, Scott said in a statement following Biden's address to a joint session of Congress. Scott, last year, rankled Republicans who, when he rolled out a 12-point policy agenda, that included sunset proposal, which the Democrats promptly began using as ammunition in the midterms. This is clearly and obviously an idea aimed at dealing with all the crazy new laws our Congress has been passing of late, Scott added, denying Biden's claim on Tuesday evening that Republicans want to end Social Security and Medicare. Biden said that instead of making the wealthy pay their fair share, some Republicans uh, want Medicare and Social Security to sunset, eliciting loud boos from GOP lawmakers in the chamber. Some House Republicans have floated the idea of reforms to entitlement programs as part of a debt ceiling negotiation, though Speaker Kevin McCarthy and others insist cuts are not on the table. Speaking over the raucous response, the president insisted, anybody who doubts it, contact my office and I'll give you a copy. I'll give you a copy of the proposal. It is being proposed by individuals. I'm politely not naming them, but it is being proposed by some of you, Biden said. That both infuriated Scott, the former chairman of the National Republican uh, Senatorial Committee, who called the claim a lie and a dishonest move, 
from a very confused president. I will not be intimidated by Joe Biden twisting my words, he declared. And he pushed back by arguing that Democrats effectively cut Medicare when they gave the federal government the power to negotiate lower prescription drug prices in the Inflation Reduction Act. He says that will lead to less money going to pharmaceutical companies to develop new drugs and therapies. Scott argues that his plan, anticipating Congress, uh, would uh, quickly renew popular programs such as Medicare and Social Security, as well as defense programs before they have a chance to sunset. Uh, Scott argues that his plan anticipates that Congress would quickly renew those popular programs. Does he think that I also intend to get rid of the U.S. Navy or the Border Patrol or air traffic control, maybe? This is the fake gotcha BS that people hate about Washington. I've never advocated cutting Social Security or Medicare, and I never would, Scott said. So that is um, the current picture as the Democrats are building up a fake attack on Republicans, accusing them of wanting to make Social Security and Medicare go away. Republicans say it's not true. I made a note to myself here four times in 1995, Biden proposed cutting Social Security and Medicare. Apparently, those uh, recordings are available out there. I am not going to find them for use on this podcast, but it doesn't surprise me that Biden would say anything that he finds expeditious or uh, that's going to be uh, uh, self-serving. I believe that's what uh, uh, I meant to say about Biden's statements. But just so you can take everything you hear with a grain of salt, the Republicans have stated that they are not in favor of getting rid of Medicare and Social Security. Uh, If anybody said it, it was yours truly, and that's the only person I know of that's saying it. So, Randy, do you have anything to stump me with again? Because, frankly, (laughs) having just announced an unpopular, I'm sure, uh, position, political position, uh, there's somebody out there who wants to stump me, I'm fairly certain. Well, you know, we have used up our 75 cents, Doug. Uh oh. Well, no stumping more. Uh, no more stumping today, I should say. No, I think I think there's plenty of things to stump everybody with, especially Joe Biden. But oh, uh, yeah. we won't go, we won't go into that today. So let's go ahead and sign off. We've we've used our seventy five cents. It's unfortunate but, timing because I my next item was going to be good news about prostate cancer. But I'll oh, save that. let's let's put that on the shelf for next time. That'll be right on top of the list. <laughs> OK, well, thank you all for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and sign off because the uh, crickets have spoken, which means our 75 cents in the uh, the meter is up. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. We uh, there's a couple things I always like to close out with. I think Doug mentioned it today earlier that he is a licensed agent nationwide he loves to hear from you send him a card or a letter or whatever you want at dbj at mlmmailbag.com or you can visit us at medicare for the lazy man.com website there's a couple there's a number of different things in there that are pretty cool to look at not the least of which is we've got what we've got a dragster video on there from uh what what dragster we do that? I used to say it was two fifty sevens, but it's a fifty five and a fifty seven uh, drag racing at uh, uh, in Kentucky at um, I want to say oh boy at the Tri Five Nationals a few years okay. ago. Okay, and, and cool. it's pretty cool because there's a pretty girl in a nineteen fifties diner waitress costume who uh, <laughs> prepares one of them to uh, run down the track. Well, you know, you know what those pretty girls are called in uh, the the uh, drag business, right? Now, this this is a family oriented, uh, you no, know, you'll family love it. friendly. I, I think what, it's a cute name. What's that? They're called bugs. Really? Backup backup girls. They they're always the ones that back up the dragster to the that's, uh, lights. That's what she was doing out there. I assume it was her husband or boyfriend that was actually driving the car, but she was in charge of helping him back up the car back to the tree, the Christmas tree. So I have a question or, you know, a request, I guess. If there are any bugs in the audience, I want you to send Doug an email at dbj at mlmmailbag.com 
because both Doug and I are big motorheads, and we would just love to hear the story of being a bug. I'm going to have to Google that because it's a new one on me. Yep, backup girls, that's what they're called. And uh, the other thing I was going to ask you to do as a favor, find some place to give us some ratings on the podcast and on the book. We would love five stars. That would be just totally awesome. But we're going to have to sign off today. We are going to say, oh, we've spent about 32 and a half minutes with Doug Jones, the anti-insurance insurance guy, originally from Oklahoma. No more. He's living up in the great great Arizona city of Cave Creek, Arizona, up in the high altitudes, probably, oh, I don't know, maybe about 9,600 feet today. And it's in his fortress of solitude. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for joining us.